Well, greetings. Hello. Hearty salutations. Welcome to Tech 3D, where we are back with tutorials. <clears throat> I'm excited. Right, if you want to follow along with this tutorial, which is the Fusion Automate command, you want to use the same files as I'm using, they're available as part of Tech 3D Join membership on YouTube. My entire tutorial, day default, all files, past and present uh, and future will be available for download as part of the Tech 3D membership plan. Uh, alternatively, you can just follow this along using your own files, but if you want the very one that I'm using, uh, it's part of my membership perch. Right. So Fusion 360 is where we're at because that's where all the cool kids are at apparently and it's the future, so they say. And we're using the automate command. Automate is a sibling of generative design. I did a shorts video on this yesterday. It's the same sort of thing, but it's a longer version of that shorts video. It's a sibling of generative design where it'll create geometry and, and make a part design in between faces that you tell it to, to, to right? But it's not generative. Generative design is a lot more intelligent. It's basically doing your work for you for all intents and purposes. So you select the faces that you want to make material between. So say that face there, that face there, and it'll start generating geometry between those faces and these ones here. So it can be this weird alien structure sprouting out from the faces and then joining all together. And then it's up to you. It'll give you three alternatives. Uh, it's actually six, but basically three. You can tell it to either make that material as a new body within the fusion component or a new component, which would be like a part and an assembly, which is a fair question to ask because you might want this to be a completely new part. Or, But I, I actually want this to be a body. It's going to be part of the same, you know, if it's a wheel, it's all one molded or forged piece. So we'll want that to be a new body. But you've also got bodies to avoid. And this one is where you can make this really creative because when you don't have bodies to avoid, it's going to spawn material just anywhere it wants to go. But you might say, well, don't put material in a certain place. And you can almost sort of navigate, dictate the navigation of, of the new stuff. So we're going to select it. We'll do that. We'll create a new sketch plane. And then let's do, we'll do, a, we'll do a polygon. Why not? How does Fusion's polygons work? Uh, on three sides. Can I just type in three? No, I can't. Okay, brilliant. Why can't I go into there? There it is. Edge number three. So we'll do a triangular about here. That's it. I don't care about the size. I'm not too fussed. I'm not even fussed about the shape, to be honest. And the position, I want the position, though, to be on that center line. Why not? So now, when the, the material spawns out from this face and this face here, I wanted to avoid a body of this size and position. So let's go to extrude that. We'll go to a symmetric extrusion, and we'll just say bush. There we go. So it'll have to dodge that area when it makes the new material. It doesn't have to be a triangle, right? It can be any shape you want. You can define the entire zones if you want to, where it's going to you know, almost like trace the path where the material goes. But we're going to go to automate again, right? Select the faces. So it's going to be that and that and that and that. Bodies to avoid, this one here. New body. And then that's it. That's all the inputs you need. Then you select generate shapes and then it shoots all of this off to the cloud servers. No cloud credits required for the moment anyway. It'll process all the variations on the cloud servers and then spit them back as alternatives. It takes about three minutes, so we'll pop back when it's done. And it would appear that we are done. Right, so I think that obstacle geometry was probably a bit excessive, <laughs> but you could, it's, it's respected it nonetheless. So alternative one looks like that. That's a preview in the viewport. When you select the alternative, select alternative number two. Mm, no, it's not too bad, that one, actually. Uh, and then alternative number three. Uh, right, that's tracing along the obstacle geometry very closely, and it's not really all that symmetrical, which is fine. Again, none of these alternatives are taking manufacturing form, function, possibilities I into consideration. They're just a starting point for you to then edit, and I'll show you that in a sec. And then alternative four, five, and six are the same as alternative one, two, and three, but the starting condition is a little bit different. So if you look at the starting condition, this is sort of like, I don't know, so it comes out not even tangent to the face, it's just this blobby sort of bleh mess. Uh, but alternative six, uh, five, and four, they're like, you know, it sort of extends the original face and gives it like a foundation for the for the starting point of the geometry. Uh, so there you go. Right, and then you pick the one that you like out of the, the, the six, although there's just three. So I'm going to say alternative number... Oh, I don't know, actually. Uh, let's go for alternative number five. And then select OK at the bottom of the dialog box. It'll then take that geometry, convert it into a fusion body, 
and then make it fully editable. And I don't want that obstacle geometry on anymore. Which one is it? It's that one there. So we'll turn off body 33. And there it is. So yeah, it's, I think the obstacle geometry was a bit much, but it, it demonstrated the point nonetheless. So if you want to edit this any further, you can, oh God, look at that. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, that's not great. So I'd probably redo this again if I was doing it in real life. But if you look at your timeline at the bottom down here, you've got a, a look, it looks like a fidget spinner. It's really do my head in. <laughs> Every time I look at that icon, right? But you double click that icon uh, and you can change the alternative, right? You can say, well, actually, I preferred alternative number four. Let's go. It's still got the little wedge in there. Never mind. And change that to number four. So you can flick it backwards and forwards, check out the different alternatives, see what they're actually going to pan out to in real life. If you want to make a change to them on the timeline down here, you've got a freeform body called organic, double click that, and it'll take you into the freeform editing environment where you can select modify, you can pick a face, an edge, whatever, and you've got full access to the T-spline tools to then, right, just bunk it around. You can get rid of that wedge if it was there. There you go. Change it to your heart's content. Once you're done, it's a legit body just like everything else. So finish the form, go to create pattern, circular pattern, select the body, select the axis, make sure it's the middle one like that, Give yourself five of them. Nice. Nice. It'll probably smash as soon as it hits a bump in the road, but, well, yeah. Uh, but then you can push it through the simulation environment. You can simulate the wheel, simulate tire pressure, tire pressures, uh, loads on the wheel, moment loads, that kind of stuff. It's now just a general fusion body. And this could be an inventor part, which has been brought through using the desktop connector, which can then be generated on and then pushed back into Inventor. Other than that, mate, that's pretty much it. It's a solid bit of kit. I'm really enjoying this. There's all kinds of wonderful designs it can come up with. And for the time being, it's free to use. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure, I couldn't tell you, to be honest, whether this is available on the bare bones basic Fusion platform or whether it needs the Fusion paid tier. I don't know. But um, for now, it's available to everybody. Whether that stays and becomes an extension in the future, I don't know. I would hope not because they've got the generative design extension. But either way, mate, there you go. Files are in the description uh, or a link to join the channel and then access to the files is in the description if you want to get at this wheel and give this one a shot yourself and come up with something creative. My name's Neil Cross. This has been Tech3D. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome back to the tutorials. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.